Okay, we're at uh, section uh, 5.5, but before we do that, I realized that uh, um, I failed to uh, finish up the last slide, and it, it's the opening story of the, the egg catch, and uh, uh, why why you move your hands back to catch the egg. If you If you were to catch the egg with stiff arms, you cause the egg to accelerate very rapidly. So a very rapid acceleration will cause an increased force. If you can grab the, if you catch the egg and move your hands backward, the acceleration is less, thus the force is less. And the force, it, it, with stiff hands catching the egg, uh, increased force, you're more likely to crack the egg. But if you move it back, if you catch while uh, moving your hands backward and slow down the acceleration then the force is less uh, that's the only thing I, I missed on the the last section I apologize um, let's uh, go to gravi gravitational force and weight this is section 5.5 uh, the cliff diver there I think is like from Mazatlan it's not Acapulco um, but uh, uh, if you take the force force equals mass times acceleration, and you substitute gravitational acceleration G for the acceleration, you get the uh, gravitational force. Uh, so um, some of the forces in this case is, is gravitational force. That's what's acting on this diver that's making him go into the water. Um, so the gravitational force is equal to the mass times the gra gravitational acceleration. And what we use is 9.8 meters per second squared but it does in um, the mag just the weight is, is just the gravitational force the, the magnitude uh, mass times the gravitational force and no, no vector involved but g varies with geographic location it varies by height so if you what you weigh at the bottom of a skyscraper is um, actually more than when you're at the top of a skyscraper. You actually, um, as, as you're, you're basically changing the radius, uh, we're not there yet, but the uh, gravitational force equals G, the gravitational constant times mass one times mass two divided by R squared. So you're changing the R squared. As you reduce it, you're, it changes. In general, we use 9.8 but it can vary uh, not only by height, like at the bottom of a mountain or at the top of a high mountain, but it also can vary by density. If you're in an area with very dense rock, uh, you'll get a particular um, gravitational acceleration. And if you're over very loosely packed, an area with very loosely packed uh, soil and not much uh, hard rock under it, uh, it'll be it'll be less. So density does change with location. Um, now, uh, on the moon, the gravitational force on the moon is about one-sixth uh, the mass. And uh, let's see, there's, um, yeah, the, the um, so when they were training, let's see this, oh, I, I missed my place on my notes. Uh, the, uh, this, photo is of Harrison Schmidt and in training the uh, the actual backpack that he wears weighs about 300 pounds 136 kilograms that's like uh, 1330 newtons uh, 1300 newtons and so for training purposes they uh, gave him a 50 pound uh, backpack to practice with here on the earth and which would replicated the gravitational force that he felt on his back. It was only 23 kilograms. Now the problem was when he went up to the moon, the uh, it the weight was was about the same, uh, but the inertial mass, in other words, it's a lot different if you have 23 kilograms on your back to to like move around, and if you have uh, 136 kilograms, 136 kilograms, there's a lot of inertia and it's hard to move. So while training, it, though they replicated the gravitational force on their shoulders, 
they did not uh, they did not uh, take into account the inertial mass being able to turn move that much mass even if it's in a lighter gravity just to move that much mass is a lot more so if the inertial mass is is it's the way we define it the uh, its tendency to either stay moving or to stay still versus the gravitational mass which is just its weight um, those are the difference between the inertial mass and gravitational mass now here on earth they they uh, end up being the same uh, as we understand them okay suppose you're talking by interplanetary telephone to a friend who lives uh, on the moon he tells you that he is that he has just won a newton of gold in a contest excitedly you tell him that you entered the earth the earth version of the same contest and also won a newton of gold who's richer you your friend or is it the same is one newton on the earth the same as one newton on the moon well no they're not uh, since the gravitational force is only um one sixth of what it is on the earth you need more mass to make up one newton so your friend is actually richer to get um I mean, the one Newton of mass that he, I mean, the, the one Newton reward that he won is much more mass just to get that one Newton because gravitational force is less. Um, okay, and the, the, we'll stop it there and then we'll go on with Newton's third law.